Hello everybody, today I am talking all about reverb. Um, it's a top question and it comes in quite a lot. So what we're going to be looking at is the two types of uh, reverb effects there are out there. Um, what all those uh, complicated little buttons and knobs and all the rest of it on the front of your or inside your uh, reverb plugin actually do um, and the advantages of the two types there's also a, a major difference between the way you can use them and so we'll look at the two ways which you can use them and that can make a huge difference um, particularly to do those of you working with limited um, facilities to make it all work really well and um, finally we look at sort of <coughs> some of the old style hardware reverbs which these plugins are um, sometimes try to emulate okay so it's a sort of a little kind of reverb 101 okay if you're new to the channel oh hello i'm guy i write music and we look at stuff like this so hang around we also do lots of lives so um you know if you feel like subscribing i i'm not going to stop you pushing the button and the little bell and all that kind of thing right let's get into reverbs right there's so there's the two type the two um types of re two main types of reverb are um, convolution and algorithmic. Now convolution reverb um, means essentially a sample of a real space. So what they've done, and here's Altiverb, which is an example of a convolution reverb. You will see, there we go, we've got the Teldex um, scoring stage in Berlin. There's a picture of it. And there is a graphic rep representation of what the reverb sounds like in that room. So they go to these places uh, and this is something we're going to be doing as long as we're, as soon as we're allowed out of lockdown and I'm allowed to go somewhere other than my front room and my shed. Um, we're going to be going and doing this. But what they do is they go there, uh, they set up speakers and they play um, a, a frequency sweep, something which goes shoo, like that. And uh, they get a this sort of blueprint of the room. Oh, that's cool. Look. And that's what it looks like. And they put it in this piece of software. And... When you put the software on your door, you can play uh, your instrument as though it's in that room. So, for example, we have here uh, Pianotech. Uh, now, Pianotech is uh, really useful because it allows me to turn off all the reverb and ambience. So we've got a completely dry sound. Now, what would that sound like if it was in the Teldex stage in Berlin? Let's find out. <laughs> there you go it works just like that so it's a really good way of placing your instrument in another space so um, with systems like um, Altiverb for example you can choose any way you like you can choose the 20th century Fox scoring stage you can choose uh, oh, they've got loads of places uh, concert halls how about Oh, how about Sydney how about Sydney Opera House and not only can you choose the uh, the place the actual location but the the, the sighting of the um, you know what what it sounds like from that particular space so if you're six meters away in the stalls it sounds like this if you're in the choir stalls if you're in the upper circle long reverb five seconds okay so it allows you to place really accurately your um, instrument in a real space and that's incredibly useful um, now the downside, I mean, so the upside of convolution reverb um, or sampled reverb is that it's very realistic and it gives you a really accurate representation of a real world space. The downside is it uses quite a lot of CPU. So if you're going to have lots of these uh, and sometimes you will need to have, you know, several, it can really take a hit on your processor. Now, if you're working on a limited uh, amount of kit, that can really cause your uh, processor to go boom and the whole thing crashes and it goes, oh, it's all ghastly. But I have a top tip coming up for ways of trying to minimize that. Now, moving right along to algorithmic, algorithmic reverb is uh, essentially uh, synthetic. In other words, um, it's not a sample, it's a synthesizer. So, but it comes up with very much the same kind of effect. It is subtly different. Um, now, this is um, Cinematic Rooms uh, from Liquid Sonics, which is a very, uh, very powerful um, algorithmic uh, reverb. Um, it's also able to uh, represent a whole load of these different spaces as well. But it does it in this way, uh, in the way of, uh, of by creating a synthetic representation of it. So it's not as accurate, but 
it does have a couple of big advantages. One is you can turn up with convolution reverb, with sampled reverb, the length of the decay is the length of the decay in the room. Now, you can turn it up and down, but that's stretching a sample and that's sort of, there's a limit to how much you can do that. If you want, however, really long reverb, this is just two seconds, okay, turn it up to 14. You can do it. And, you, you know, you can have as long as you like. You, what do you want? Well, as long as you like. 40 second reverb. Ooh, I rather like that. Okay. So, you have all kinds of control over the space which you don't have when you have um, a sampled reverb or convolution reverb. Um, but the biggest, for most people, the biggest advantage of um, uh, convol of synthesized uh, algorithmic reverb is that it takes a very low hit on your CPU. So if you are the kind of person who's going to use lots of these or you're working on a tiny tiny 20 year old laptop then there's a good chance that a algorithmic reverb will get you further than a, than a convolution one. So those are the two types. Um, let's move along for a second and look at the two important ways you can um, implement them in your uh, in your door. A lot of people the first thing they do is um, they bring up their um, your, the, the two ways are let me explain this the two ways are either inline so in other words there's the piano um, thing and I just insert my uh, reverb on that channel so when you first get this up, it's going to sound just pure reverb, which is a bit ridiculous. Um, so this control here, and all reverbs have it, it dry wet is very important. So this is currently set to 100% wet. Now, you, what you want is you obviously want a balance of the two. You want some dry. So that's this is 100% dry. And the more you turn the balance, the more reverb there is in there. So if you're putting it in line, in other words, you're just putting the reverb effect on the channel. You need to balance the wet dry mix. Do you like this rather satisfied graphic going on on the right here? Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Um, now, the downside of doing inline is that you're going to need one instance of uh, the reverb for every single instrument you're going to put it on. And that's going to chew up your CPU and go, nom, nom, nom. I'm not interested in you. I'm going to knock you. Uh, all that kind of nonsense. So you probably don't want to do that. Um, what the vast majority of people would do is put it on um, a, a bus. Now, what this means is you create, and it's, it's, it, ha it's, it works dif in different ways. I tell you what, let me just, let me start from scratch. Let me actually get rid of these and, and start from scratch. And um, it works slightly differently in different um, uh, doors, but basically you look for an effect, you create a, uh, an effects track uh, or an auxiliary bus or whatever, and you call it, I don't know, Altiverb. And uh, it is there. There it comes up, and Altiverb is on its effects track. So what we're not going to do, let's turn that one off, um, from, the, uh, from the piano, we're not actually going to put the, um, if we can get rid of it there, because we don't want it anymore. We go, yep, discard, and that one, go away. We don't want you. Thank you very much. So there's no effects actually on the track itself. What you do is you set up um, a, a, a send. So this sends are essentially little bits of wire, virtual bits of wire, which join one part of the door to another. So this, this knob here, is sending signal to the altiverb. And if you look at the altiverb, there's the altiverb. You can see it's uh, reverberating away there. Um, so that, now the advantage to that is um, that I can have multiple instruments. Let's create another one. I don't mind, what am I going to have? Um, let's go for a guitar. Um, and I don't have to duplicate the reverb. I can just um, s have a second send. So where's me? Where's the, okay, there's that. There's the guitar. Let's go to the send. I can send this to the reverb as well. So we've got one reverb. Mm -hmm. 
one reverb, two instruments. And uh, so that's going to save you an absolute ton of processing power. So if you're on a laptop or something like that, absolutely, this is the way to go. Um, now, I'm working in Cubase. Um, almost all the more main doors, Cubase uh, Logic uh, certainly, have built in their own um, uh, dedicated reverbs. And a lot of the time, they're really great. Um, and they almost all of them will have a uh, algorithmic and a convolution reverb built in. Um, in Logic, it, um, if you load up um, Space Designer, it will give you the option between synthesized and uh, sampled uh, reverb. And that's, that's what's happening. That's what's going on in um, 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 Space Designer. It's, it's, it's swapping between an algorithmic reverb and a, uh, a convolution one all built in. It's really good. It's a good system. And Space Designer is actually a really good reverb. I like it. Um, uh, there's exactly the same works uh, in uh, Cubase. So you, can, you don't necessarily have to spend lots of money on um, external reverb, but uh, there are some really good ones out there. Okay, let's look at some of the common controls which you get on your um, reverb and understand what they are. Um, now we've looked already, this is uh, Lexicon, which is uh, a plug-in version of their hardware reverb, which was one of the classics. I had one actually, I had a Lexicon 300. Uh, I've still got it and I never plug it in um, because actually the, um, the, you know, the plug-in version is a lot easier and all the rest of it. Um, so this, okay, let's have a look at what we've got. We've got the mix, we looked at the mix, which we've got, which goes from 100% dry, up to 100% wet and because we're running this as a bus um, um, reverb we've got it set to 100% wet. Now um, pre-delay. Um, if you think of a room like this one, um, it's, no not like this one, this is way too small. But imagine you're standing in a great big hall somewhere or something like that. Um, the first reflect, the first thing you're going to hear is going to take a while. It might go hello, hello type thing. Do you see what I mean? So and the pre-delay is the length of time before the reverb sets in. So if it's a really big room, you see, I can turn it up. So so to, to, to make a point, and this sounds ridiculous, here's three quarters of a second of pre-delay. Here we go, there it is. There's the pre-delay. Set it for like 700. So that, it, obviously you wouldn't do that, but if you wanted, you the more, the longer the pre-delay, your brain tells you the bigger the space is. Um, the other one um, is um, early reflections. Um, now, this is something which, this is slightly controversial. Um, early reflections is something lexicon don't believe in, <laughs> to be honest. But it, the, the point being, okay, so my, if I'm sitting in my room here going, um, again, <laughs> 12 by 12 shed in the garden is not the best example. Um, but some things like I'm going to get some reflection off the keyboard, I'm going to get some reflection off this wall here. So I'm going to get these early reflections, um, which will sound different to the ones which come from the rest of the room. That's the point of early reflections. And normally in a reverb, you get a knob somewhere which allows you to balance um, the early reflections against the rest of the reverb. As I say, Lexicon actually don't believe in it. And they say it's all fake news and actually there's just reverb. And what happens is as the reverb gets more complicated and bounces around the room more, it just turns into the sort of reverb tail. And that's why another one of these buttons is really important, diffusion. Do you see diffusion there? Diffusion is the difference between how many individual little spiky reverbs, uh, re reflections you hear, and that kind of big sort of wash of just everything chaotically going into each other. So the more diffusion there is, the less you can hear the individual uh, little reflections. The more diffusion, the bigger the virtual room, your brain tells you. Um, so the, the less early reflections, the larger the room, the more early reflections, the smaller the room. That's the theory behind it. You will need to go in there and play. You know, if you play around with stuff um, and you turn down the reverb time a bit. Okay. Early, earlies are up. A pre-delay is down. Diffusion is down. That will sound like a small room. And it does sort of thing. Turn that up, uh, turn the earlies right down, bit more pre-delay and a longer reverb time, like 
two and a half seconds. And that sounds like a much bigger space. That's how it works. Okay. So if you're really going to get into this, uh, you can start really messing with this stuff. Um, there are other issues with um, reverbs. If, and this is much more complicated, but if you're going to uh, start uh, working in surround, um, you need reverbs which support it because the phase problems you get if you're just trying to use individual reverbs on different sounds are horrific. <laughs> Honestly, don't go there. Um, so that is why uh, things like uh, cinematic reverb, cinematic rooms here uh, is uh, phenomenal. It supports ridiculous, ridiculous configurations. Um, so you can have I can't remember off the oh no, I shouldn't I should know, but I don't know. Um but you can have, you know, ten point two, you can go absolutely crazy. Any configuration you're gonna want, you're gonna be able to do. And with uh, uh cinematic rooms in particular, you get so much control. You can really um go in there and if you're if you're in that kind of mood, you can totally change the whole space. And for an algorithmic rhythmic reverb, it does an incredible job of reproducing accurately individual spaces um, so it, it is absolutely the bee's knees um, for um, if you look at a lot of reverbs they actually um, will reproduce um, old bits of um, hardware so for example uh, if we go into the native reverb bundle lexicon plate okay so what a plate reverb was um, if you um, if you can imagine <laughs> back in the day um, before anybody invented um, digital um, technology they would have a whacking great metal plate with a sort of uh, a sort of speaker event on one end of it and a pickup on the other and the sound would tr travel through the plate and give you a reverb like um, effect except it would be very toppy so what people use plate reverb for a lot it's um, some drums and some um, vocals and things like that sound particularly good when they go through um, uh, plate reverb. Uh, let me try, let's get a drum up. Uh, what shall I use? That's uh, okay. Well, let's put that through it. There's uh, where's my thing gone? Right. Let's send it to that. That's a plate reverb. You see, it's got that kind of sharp, slappy sound, which is really can be really, really, really useful. So, um, there's also spring reverbs, which were I had one of those, which is a, a box with a whacking great load of springs in it, and it did the same kind of thing, and it sounds terrible, absolutely terrible, but it's a it's a it's an effect, and it's really useful. Now, what most people do, or a lot, a lot of people will do, is you can you use more than one reverb. So, for example. Um, if you um, were trying you to use one reverb to place your um, sound in the room so you'd for example use a convolution reverb sample reverb like alter verb or spaces um, to place your instrument in that virtual room then you'd use um, an algorithmic reverb like um, uh, cinematic rooms or lexicon or whatever to um, give you the kind of that kind of gorgeous washy sort of sound which goes over the top so that's pretty much how reverb works um, and I'll put links to the reverbs I've talked about. So the ones you, I mean, there are, I have talked about some quite expensive ones. Bear in mind your door will always have a re, al almost all doors will have one built in. And I think, hang on, just before we go, I think we, I just want to give an honorable mention to uh, one of the best value um, of the uh, lower cost ones and it's called Valhalla. Valhalla Vintage Verb reproduces the effect of some of these really expensive reverbs but for only $50. So um, I'll show you what I mean. And if you want a good um, algorithmic reverb which won't break the bank, um, uh, this is $50 well spent. Sounds great. It's not as sophisticated as um, things like Cinematic Rooms and Lexicon but but it's it's really good. Um, 
one final reverb to look at um, is the uh, Waves one um, because this is uh, the IR-L full stereo. Um, what makes this different? It, it's a convolution reverb, but it's if you go to here to the presets, look at this. It says import IR.WAV. So if you have made your own impulse response um, uh, sound, uh, you can just load it in and you can hear the sound of your own bedroom or whatever or you know your favorite school hall or whatever and you it's really really good and as i said we will be doing this when we get a chance so it's got a whole load of different there's somebody's kitchen it's got sort of um, post-production spaces like these um and uh, as well as sort of normal um, auditoriums and things oh todd ao scoring stage there you go. That's what Torreo sounds like, or used to sound like. I don't think it exists anymore. And um, so, yeah, the Waves one is really good if you're going to get into loading into your own um, impulse responses. And you don't have to load in reverb responses. You can load in other sounds. And so you can feed your piano through the sound of the inside of a guitar or something. Anyway, that is all I've got for you on reverb. It's a pretty comprehensive... <laughs> A little bit more comprehensive than I intended to start with. But anyway, I hope you found it useful and helpful. And if you did, um, then let me know in the comments. And uh, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I honestly don't mind. I won't throw a hissy fit if you subscribe and tick the little bell thing. Anyway, that's it from me. Uh, thanks very much for your company. See you very soon. Bye-bye.